Okay. Today we're going to start reactions and equations. Now, I want you guys to realize that in this class and in almost all of science, you can abbreviate reaction or reactions as RXN or RXNS. So if you ever see me do that, it just means reactions. Like what does GOVT stand for? What does PHS stand for? What does USA stand for? We can abbreviate things. So in this class, just to save maybe a, a fraction of a second, we just write RXN to be reaction. So whenever you see me do that, that is what that means, okay? All right, so you have a vocab quiz on this uh, content tomorrow. You have a test on this a week from tomorrow. Here we go. So we're gonna learn about chemical reactions. Now, you all know that all matter, whether it be solid, liquid, or gas, is composed of atoms. You know, in, in the vastness of outer space, the, the area between planets and moons and stars and asteroids, there's nothing. It is a void. There's not even air. So we call space a vacuum. It's an absence of everything. So in space, there's no atoms, except where you have stars and planets and moons and asteroids and nebulas. But in the space between them, like the space between the Earth and the moon, there's nada. The space between Earth and Mars or another planet, nothing. All right. Well, whenever um, these atoms are rearranged, atoms can be rearranged to form a new substance. For example, something that you're going to see today, I could have two molecules of hydrogen gas. I could have one molecule of oxygen gas. And that can yield two molecules of water as a liquid. That is called a chemical equation or a chemical reaction. I want you to notice that the same elements, hydrogen and oxygen, are on both sides of the reaction. They were just rearranged. I'm sure a lot of you have played with Legos before. You can turn a whole box of Legos and you can build a spaceship. You can build a house. You can build a castle. You can build a Lego sword. You can build a Lego dinosaur, all with the same box of Legos. You're just rearranging them. That is what happens in a chemical reaction. A few other examples of chemical reactions would be like uh, food that you eat converted into energy in heat. That is a chemical reaction. When you metabolize your food, you eat a cheeseburger and you get some energy from that. Or you put liquid gasoline in your car and some of it is used to power your car and some of it is released as waste or exhaust. Uh, cooking. You know, you have basically you have inedible food converted into edible food. You can't go to the seafood section and say, all right, give me that salmon. If you eat it, you might get sick, but if you cook it, you'll be fine. That's a chemical reaction. Um, an apple that is browning. If you take a big bite of the apple, it shows like the meat of the apple inside, the, the whitish um, stuff in the middle. If you leave it out in the open air, it starts to turn brown. That's a chemical reaction. Or a fire burning down a forest. That's a chemical reaction. Another one would be rusting. 
That is a chemical reaction. So we see chemical reactions all over the place. So the definition of a chemical reaction, which this is one of your vocab words, is the process by which atoms of one or more substances are rearranged to form different substances. Again, if you look at what I put up um, earlier on the board or on the screen, hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to yield liquid water. Water is nothing more than hydrogen and oxygen arranged in a very specific way. Here, if you look up here, I have two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. Put them together in a very specific way, you get liquid water. Or you can get water vapor, or you can get solid water, which is ice. It depends on the temperature and the pressure. <clears throat> okay, any questions so far on what a chemical reaction is? So let's go to evidence that a chemical reaction has actually occurred. Well, first off, you, you can observe physical changes. One could be a temperature change. Anybody ever use those icy hot packs? That's a, that's a chemical reaction. I want you guys to try to think before you speak here. If something is going from hot to cold, think before you speak. Is energy being absorbed by the chemical reaction or is energy being released by the chemical reaction? If you are holding it in your hand and it is getting colder, is it absorbing heat or is it releasing heat? If it is getting colder in your hand, I knew you would say that. If it's releasing, think about this. I'm holding this skull in my hand. If this skull is, feels like it's getting warmer, it's releasing heat right into my hand. My hand is pretty much as close as you can get. So if I can feel it getting hotter, is it releasing heat or is it absorbing heat? If I feel it, like imagine little heat waves being released. Where are those heat waves going? They're going to my hand. If something feels warmer, it is releasing energy. That is why it's getting warmer. You are feeling, let me rephrase that. You are feeling the heat because it is releasing the heat. So imagine this, if it is releasing heat, is this getting hotter or colder? It is getting colder. I am getting warmer. Where is the heat that I'm feeling coming from? The skull. So is the skull releasing heat or is the skull absorbing heat? And the hush fell across the classroom. If I am feeling that this is getting, I'm feeling a bunch of heat. I am holding the skull in my hand and I feel to touch, it feels hot. Is this skull releasing heat or is it absorbing heat? It is releasing heat, very good. Now, if it is releasing heat, is the skull itself getting hotter or colder? Right. And sometimes we got to think that out. So if you are going from hot to cold, this is a heat release. On the other hand, if I am holding this uh, cowbell in my hand and it is getting colder 
and colder and colder, is it absorbing heat or releasing heat? Listen, listen again. If it is getting colder and colder eventually. All right, I just, I just changed the object, didn't change the circumstance. Now, let's change to another one. Um, I'm holding this ax. And as I hold this ax, let's see, I am getting colder and colder. What's this, what's happening to this? Yeah, it's taking my heat. So it is absorbing heat. So something is starting to go from cold to hot, it is absorbing heat, or that's a heat absorption. Yes, Arshan? Like ice melting is absorbing heat, right? When ice melts, the water is absorbing heat from you. If you're holding ice in your hand and that ice is starting to melt, it is absorbing heat from you, which means that it is gaining heat and therefore you are losing heat. But there's an asterisk to that. You are a mammal. So do you generate your own heat or do you get it from the environment? Yeah, those turtles downstairs in the turtle pond, those are reptiles. Do they absorb heat from the environment or do they generate their own? They absorb from the environment. So typically whenever you hear something is cold blooded, cold blooded means that they are whatever the air temperature is. So in the summertime, when I come and stop by plant and feed the turtles, they're swimming all over the place. They're all happy because it's hot out. How do you think they are right now? They're slow. They're lazy, they're tired because they are basically what the air temperature is, which right now is kind of chilly. So they hate that, they're reptiles. That's why during the summertime, or excuse me, during the winter time, um, you see a lot of reptiles just basking in the sun, trying to get warm. If you ever drive down Alligator Alley, which is on the interstate between Naples and uh, Fort Lauderdale, has anyone driven that? It's like a solid 100 miles. In the summertime, if you're looking left and right, you will see hundreds of alligators. I keep saying summer, the winter time. In the winter time, you will see hundreds of alligators lined up along the canal on both sides of the road because it's cold out typically in the winter and they're trying to get warm. Uh, several years ago, I, I flew into Fort Lauderdale Airport and I had to drive back to Tampa and I was looking both sides. Alligator alleys said even 100 miles and there are alligators everywhere just because they're trying to warm up. All right, um, another indicator is that there is a color change like a rotten banana or a rotten apple or food that's gone bad or nails that have been left out to rust another is going to be an odor or gas bubbles or even the formation of solid have you ever seen milk that's gone so bad that it started to get solid. Pretty nasty. That's a chemical change. That's a physical change. <clears throat> How about when you put some aspirin into a glass of water, it starts to fizz. That's a chemical reaction. Okay. Now, let's talk about the figures that we use for representing oh i think this might be the water's working let's hear it hello this is an urgent message from alert tampa the precautionary boil water notice issued earlier this week is no longer in effect there you go. service area which includes the city of tampa as well as parts of unincorporated hillsborough county the water in our service area is now confirmed to be safe to drink. Thank you. Press one to confirm. There you go. Press check. So you guys can drink toilet water again. All right, representing. You ever notice that in schools, the toilets are or the bathrooms are always next to the water fountains? You know why? Same water. It's the same water, but it's not the the water that goes in the toilet diverges. It's not, okay, after the toilet, we'll put it in the water fountain. It's just the same water. All right. So here's some fact, uh, things you guys need to know. When you have a chemical reaction, reactants yield products. Reactants are always on the left. 
There is no exception to this rule. We call the left side of a chemical reaction the reactant side. The right side is the product side. This is always on the right. No exceptions. No exceptions. Jade, no exceptions. Are you okay? Did I frighten you? Do you need to go to the bathroom? Yeah. You can go. I guess I frightened Arshan. Now, everybody, reactants, the heck are those? I think this is another vocab term. Reactants are what is needed for a chemical reaction. If you are going to bake a cake this weekend, you need eggs, you need milk, you need sugar, you need flour, you need all that stuff to make a cake. Those are your reactants. Your products are what you produce from a chemical reaction. What is produced from a chemical reaction? So if you make a cake, you need eggs, you need milk, you need uh, flour, you need all, sugar, all the things you need for a cake, those are your reactants. The cake itself is your product. The products are always on the right. The reactants are always on the left. No exceptions. Products on the right, reactants on the left. Reactants are what you need. Here's something that you guys probably remember from freshman year of bio. What is that the equation for? Anybody remember? Carson? Very good. You, you, you need carbon dioxide, you need water to, in sun to produce uh, glucose and oxygen. What side is the reactant side? The left side of that arrow or the right side of that arrow? The left, every single time. These are your reactants. This is what you need. What do you call the right side? Products. This is what you produce from the chemical reaction. Any questions so far? Now, this guy right here, that arrow, here are things that you can say. It is not equals. If you ever say equals, I'm going to correct you. It is not equals. You can either say yields. You can say yield. Or you can say react to produce. Don't say equals. Ever. For this symbol, you've been seeing this since kindergarten, plus sign. We don't say plus. When you see that, you're going to say with, or you can say and, but don't say plus. Don't say that. So what I would say here is carbon dioxide, oops, uh, reacts with, here's another one. You can say reacts with. That's probably going to be the one you say the most. Reacts with. Carbon dioxide, which is this one, reacts with water uh, to produce or to yield or yields. You can say carbon dioxide and water yields um, sugar and oxygen, glucose. You can also say carbon dioxide reacts with there's another one I left out. We'll add that in there. Reacts with water to produce. There's another one. Glucose and oxygen. The bottom line is don't say plus, don't say equals. Anything so far? Any questions? Okay. Moving on. Furthermore, you must also indicate 
the state of matter. When you see a substance end with S, that means solid. For example, this right here means solid iodine. If you see a G, that means gas. For example, this means hydrogen gas. If you see this, yeah. And if you see um, an L, this would be liquid bromine, for example. Liquid water, whatever the substance might be. And there's another one here. It's, this is not a state of matter, okay? Let's keep that in mind. This is aqueous. Aqueous means it dissolves in water. We talked about this when we did acids. So if I have, for instance, H2SO4 aqueous, anybody tell me the name of that? That is sulfuric acid. The definition of an acid is that when you place it into water, it releases hydrogen ions. So it's aqueous, that means it dissolves in water. Okay, let's talk about um, other symbols used in chemical reactions. <clears throat> First off, you have the plus symbol. This just separates two or more reactants or two or more products. Don't say plus, you say and or reacts with. You won't see minus by the way, you're never gonna see minus. Uh, the yields arrow. This separates the reactant side from the product side of an equation. This symbol here means that the reaction is reversible. This separates reactants from products I said things before I wrote it. Separates reactants from products, just like the one above it. And indicates that the reaction is reversible, which means it can go both ways. It would, it would go in the forward direction, or you can have it go in the reverse direction. So you have the plus symbol, you have the yields arrow, you have the reversible yields arrow, then you have G, S, L, and A, Q. And that's about it. Okay, so let's catch our breaths. Let's do a review before I get into the next part because this is going to be really building up on itself. So we started up here. A chemical reaction is just where you have certain chemical elements or certain chemical su chemical substances that are rearranged to form something new. An example here is I have hydrogen gas reacts with oxygen gas to yield liquid water. Those are all the same elements. 
hydrogen and oxygen. They're just rearranged. How many reactants are there in that chemical equation? Two. There's hydrogen gas and there's oxygen gas. How many products are there? One. So that was just a series of questions to have me make sure you guys can see this. There's two reactants, there's one product. Um, some examples of that a chemical reaction is actually taking place, you see temperature changes. It uh, gets hotter. If it gets hotter, and when I say it, I mean the, the reaction is getting hotter, it's absorbing energy. If the, let me ask you this, and I'll ask you this a different way. If the reaction is getting hotter, what is happening to the surrounding area? It's getting colder because you have to remember that energy is not created or destroyed. It cycles. So let's say that Jade is hugging her best friend that just fell into an icy lake. And she's hugging her friend to help her warm her up. So Jade is hugging her friend. If her friend says, oh, I feel much warmer, according to thermodynamics, what is happening to Jade? She's getting colder. The little asterisk to that is that Jade is a mammal and she can generate her own heat. If you were holding like a searing hot cube of metal in your hand and you just gritted your teeth and you're holding out for the pain, over time it gets cooler. What is hotter, you or this searing hot piece of metal? This metal is burning hot. You're saying that you, your body's hotter than it? No. I'm getting there. Hold on. So you're holding this burning hot piece of metal in your hand. It is hotter than you are, but you're, you're gritting your teeth. You're just going to tough it out. And over time it gets cooler. It gets cooler. So is it absorbing heat or is it losing heat? It's losing heat. Where is it losing heat to? Well, you and the environment. And so you would start to feel warmer. It would start to get cooler. Okay, uh, reactants are always on the left side of chemical reaction. There are no exceptions to that rule. That's one of the few times in science that you'll actually hear an instructor say, no exceptions. And products are always on the right. Um, the reactants is what you need. The products are what you make. When you guys go through 13 years of um, school, kindergarten through 12th grade, your product is your diploma. Your reactants are those 13 years you've put in. Take a look at this uh, reaction for photosynthesis. Forget about the sun. Just worry about the basic chemical reaction. How many reactants are there? Two. How many products are there? Two. Glucose and oxygen. And the reactants are carbon dioxide and water. Remember to never say equals. Say yields, Max. Um, Instead of saying plus, you say with, or reacts with, or to produce. Um, S means solid, G means gas, L means liquid, A means aqueous, which means to dissolve in water. All right, here we go. So let's get to word equations. Before I begin, I want to do a reminder for all of you. You'll need to remember this. There's going to be a lot of points in this unit where you guys will be like this. Oh, that's right. Here's what it's going to be referring to. Do you remember this? What does that mean? Nicole? There are seven diatomic molecules. What are they? What does the have stand for? Hydrogen. What does no stand for? Nitrogen. What does F stand for? Fluorine. Oops. F L U O R I N E. What does of stand for? What does I stand for? What does C stand for? Chlorine. And what does beer stand for? Bromine. Okay. Guys, on Earth, under normal conditions, hydrogen is a gas. Nitrogen is a gas. Fluorine is a gas. 
Oxygen is a gas. Iodine is a solid. Oops. Bromine is a liquid. Oops, wrong one. Chlorine is a gas. And bromine is a liquid. If you ever see these seven, you need to remember that they're diatomic. Not just B, R, not just CL, not just F, not just H, not just O, not just N, not just I. It's H2, N2, F2, O2, I2, Cl2, Br2, every time. And so that's going to get me to word equations. This is going to, and I'm, I'm telling you, you're, some of you are just going to have to make that mistake and learn from it. There's a lesson to be learned in every mistake. Whenever you see those seven, you have to remember that they are diatomic. Yes, Nicole? No, no. Not unless it specifically says ion. If it just says nitrogen, you must know, oh, that's into, not just in. If you see the word chlorine, you have to know it's Cl2, not just Cl. All right, so in a word equation, this is where you actually use the names of atoms, ions, compounds, and molecules as the reactants and the products. So here's an example. Aluminum and bromine yields aluminum bromide. Here's another one. Hydrogen reacts with oxygen to yield water. Oops, my guilty uh, Habit is I always forget to put the symbols for the state of matter. So call me out on it. I need to break that habit. Now remember, water can be solid, water can be gas, and water can be vapor. That's the cool thing about Earth, a liquid. That's the cool thing about planet Earth. Planet Earth is in the Goldilocks zone where we are close enough to the sun for water to be in the liquid state. If we were too close to the sun, what state would water be in? It would be a gas, it would be boiling hot. If we were too far away from the sun, what state would water be in? It would be ice, solid. So we're just in the perfect zone for it to be a liquid. Not a lot of places have that. Yes, Arshan? For a liquid or a aluminum diatomic, like molecules, do you need something to call one? It's not so precise. What do you mean one? Yeah, if it's not diatomic, it's just the atom. Okay. It's just those seven diatoms. So his question is, for aluminum, do we just put Al, or do I put Al2, 3, 4, 5? Only those seven diatoms. So if it's not one of those seven diatoms, hydrogen, you know, have no fear of ice cold beer, you just leave it as the atom. All right? Okay, so um, let's do one more. Here's the photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide. reacts with water and sun to produce glucose and oxygen. So these are all just word problems. And we call them word equations. Now we do skeleton equations.
a skeleton equation is where you use the chemical formulas. of reactants and products. Okay, so I want us to do the first practice one I did um, above. I have aluminum. What is the symbol for aluminum, Derek? AL, very good. Is AL one of the seven diatoms, Jade? No. no, it isn't. So we just put AL. What state of matter did I, did I indicate aluminum is in? Solid. There you go. Okay, next. It says aluminum reacts with bromine. Max, how do I write bromine? No. Have no fear of ice cold beer. What did I say up here? Oh, DR. See, I told you. I told you. I'm just using it for an example, Max. This is where you guys, all of you, I would bet, wager all of you are going to, oh, you got to have that little realization. Oh, it's diatomic. You got to catch yourself with those. So tell me again, Max, what is it? Uh, DRL. No. Seven diatoms. Di means two. What are you doing, Max? BR2. Oh, DR2. My bad. BR2. Two and what state is bromine in? Uh, it is the only diatom that's a liquid at room temp. Okay, now here's the fun part. Oh boy. Okay, it's gonna take a second. What is the ionic charge of an aluminum ion? Three positive. positive three. What is the ionic charge? of a bromine or correction bromide ion negative one at what ratio does aluminum and bromide cancel each other out carson one, one to three aluminum bromide is a l b r three we are not up to that point yet arshan i i get your concern we're not there yet here is where I got that formula. Aluminum has a positive three charge. Bromide has a negative one charge. And like Carson said, you need three bromides to cancel out that aluminum. That is why aluminum bromide's formula is AlBr3. Where did the other bromides go? We are not there yet. We will get there. It's like watching the first 20 minutes of Avengers and saying, how did that happen? What's going to happen? You got to let the whole story play out. Yes, Arshan. No, it's like, so it's not covalent, it's like ionic. Yes. Um, All right. Let's do another example. I did hydrogen and oxygen produce water. What do I write for hydrogen? H2. Very good. What do I write for oxygen? O2, very good. What do I write for water? Water, H2O. Now, this chemical equation drove me crazy when I was in high school. I see the two hydrogens on both sides. Where did the other oxygen go? Now, I'm going to tell you what I wish my teacher told me. There is an answer to it. We're not there yet. We will get there. I will tell you. Up here, Arshan's like, wait a minute, where'd that third bromine come from? I get that concern. 16-year-old Mr. Thoris is like, where did the other oxygen go? I see there's two oxygens here. There's only one here. Where'd it go? We're getting there. We have to do this in order. Let's do one more. I'm going to give you the skeleton equation and the word, or I want you to do the word equation and the skeleton equation. So we have copper reacts with sulfur. To produce um, copper one sulfide. 
what do what is the symbol for copper? C U. Is it diatomic? No. And it is solid. What is the symbol for sulfur? S, that is correct. Is it diatomic? No. So now copper one sulfide. Do you remember what the Roman numerals stand for for the transition metals that are in the D block? The charge. So what is the charge of this copper? Positive one. What is the charge of sulfide? Negative two. I love how you guys are looking at the periodic table and, and thinking about it. You have to be able to do that. So anyone but Carson Dye needs to tell me what at what ratio will copper one and sulfide cancel each other out? It's not one to two, two to one. You need two coppers, you need one sulfide. So the formula is going to be, what is it? You tell me. Cu2s. That's copper one sulfide. No, like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said copper one, but why does this say Cu2? Does the Roman numeral tell you how many coppers there are? Uh-uh. The Roman numeral tells you what the charge is. Yeah. Solid. Or no, liquid. This makes a liquid. Okay. Yes, Carson. You will either be given that, or if I gave you this formula, for instance, Carson, what if I told you I gave you this? And I said, okay, tell me the name. You, here's what you do. If I were you, knowing what you should know, I know that copper is Cu. I know that S is sulfur. Um, but I don't know how many, I see that I have two coppers, right? And I have one sulfur. What is the charge of just one sulfur? Negative one. No. Negative, Negative two. What is the charge, uh, what must the charge of the coppers be if there's two coppers but one sulfur? That's right. That's how you figure it out. So you should know that the anion has a negative two charge. You see that there are two of the cations, two coppers. So it takes two coppers to balance out one sulfur. One sulfur has a charge of negative two, so each copper must have a charge of positive one to balance it out. All right. Um, let's see if there's anything else I want to throw at you guys today. Uh, I don't think so. I'll give you one last vocab term before your quiz tomorrow. Here it is. Chemical equations. A chemical equation is a statement that uses chemical formulas to show identities and amounts of the substances involved in the reaction. Okay. Here's the plan, guys. You have a vocab quiz tomorrow. It should take 10 minutes. We are going to continue this and we're going to do plenty of practice and you will have a homework assignment over the weekend to really give you guys that much needed practice that you um, are going to require to do well in this unit. I really like this unit because the numbers, it's all numbers and numbers don't lie. It's just a balancing act. Like uh, Carson just asked, how do you know it's, what type of copper do you know? How do you know? You look at the sulfur, you look at the copper, there's one sulfur, there's two coppers. We will continue this tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm going to teach you how to balance an equation. So the question that you have about if it's ALBr3, where did that third bromine come from? That will be answered tomorrow. Yes. Down. Be sure that you were studying all your vocab. Look them up. We'll do the quiz. That should take 10 minutes. You don't have uh, too many vocab terms to, for this unit. And you will have homework over the weekend. Tomorrow, I'm going to teach you how to balance. That's always fun. See ya.
Why do you send me that link? I said everybody does. Oh. I responded. I saw that. That was like. Permission slip. Get them out. Get them out. Get them out.